Marlene, you're our warning that, ooh, whoops, no, you got it. Uh, the, the absolute cute part, there is a, actually a video where he kind of does an acoustic version in front of a whole class of, of like fifth and sixth graders. And you can see, you can lip read every little kid. You can, you can absolutely <laughs> read their lips singing along with it. It's the cutest thing. Uh, and, and he, th that man, ooh, Soler, he is a, just cute as a button. Okay. Uh, vale, muy bien. Uh, lo que quiero hacer esta noche, what I want to do tonight, lo quiero uh, hacer esta noche es practicar en en algunos sentidos muy generales. Vamos a practicar muy generalmente hablando de, hablando de nosotros, hablando de sí mismo, talking about yourself mainly. Um, we're gonna, a lot of introductions because we got a lot of new people in today. So um, I, I wanna do some introductions and we're gonna kind of incorporate this um, some of you may just be doing introductions to talk about yourselves, if you're a new person in the group. Uh, some of you may be going off and talking about what helps you survive what we're living through now. <laughs> Esto me ayuda sobrevivir. Esto me ayuda sobrevivir. This helps me get by. Y Como siempre, como siempre, voy a, voy a compartirles. I'm going to uh, share with you uh, a couple things that we may use as uh, kind of a guideline, but don't feel that you must use these ideas. Uh, I'll put something up on the screen so you can see just some general ideas of what you might want to use. Sometimes people like a little idea of what sort of framework of verbs might I use, but these aren't the only things you can use, okay? Por ejemplo, por ejemplo, voy a empezar con mi ejemplo. Uh, y porque tenemos tantas personas aquí, because we've got so many people here, you may want to use the hand button when I'm done to volunteer, just because I, I'm not used to managing quite so many people on the big screen. Vale, bueno. Vale, voy a empezar. Uh, me llamo Marilyn, me llamo Marilyn, uh, me llamo Marilyn y vengo originalmente, originalmente soy de Chicago, viví en Chicago 11 años, pero originalmente, muy originalmente, soy de Michigan. Michigan, aquí, aquí en Michigan, aquí, en el oeste. Sí. Siempre. Las personas que viven en Michigan siempre usan la mano para describir. Ah, soy de aquí. Soy de aquí. <laughs> soy de aquí. Si vives en el península, en la península aquí, no, no sé. Pero aquí siempre. Bueno, uh, vengo originalmente de Michigan y me dedico a, a enseñar, claro. Uh, soy... Soy una jubilada. I'm a retired person. Técnicamente, técnicamente, soy una jubilada. I'm a retiree. Técnicamente, technically. Pero me dedico a enseñar. Me dedico a, me dedico a. This is what indicates what I do for a living. Ah. Uh, many times when people, you, you can just use soy. Soy médico. Soy contador. I'm an accountant. Soy programador, I'm a programmer. But many, many people, instead of using soy in a profession, use me dedico a, me dedico a. And you can tell from the way that's set up, that's a reflexive verb. I dedicate myself to. Es muy común en español decir me dedico a un verbo. Me dedico a enseñar. Por ejemplo, me dedico a programar. I dedicate myself to programming if you are a guy who does oh. computer work all day, I see. Um, OK, por ejemplo. OK, entonces, ¿y qué me gusta? Uh, ¿Qué me gusta? Me, uh, me 
me gusta leer, me gusta, uh, me gusta coser con, con hilo y todo. I, I like to sew. Me, me gusta hablar español, claro, y escuchar español. Uh, me, me gusta, me gusta qué más. Uh, me gusta pasar un rato afuera en el desierto. Y uh, durante el invierno, durante el invierno, lo que me ayuda, que no es reflexivo, this is not reflexive, but something else helps me. It's not me dedico, but something else helps me. Lo que me ayuda sobrevivir la pandemia es montar en bicicleta. Uh, me encanta muchísimo ma a montar en bicicleta de montaña. No monto en bicicleta por las calles, con el tráfico, con, con los carros. No, no, no. Uh, me encanta montar en bicicleta de montaña, en el desierto, en los senderos, trails, de los parques. Y también lo que me ayuda a sobrevivir la pandemia era, oh, Shit's Creek. Soy gran aficionada a Shit's Creek. Y uh, aprendí, aprendí el término en inglés, button. He's a button. Aprendí el término de, de expresar. Uh, cuando, cuando quieres expresar que una un, que un hombre es muy guapo, es muy buen hombre, es muy precioso, es una persona fantástica. Estoy jubilado. Sí, uh, siempre digo, uh, ¿qué pasó? Uh, siempre se dice, eh, es un button. Ok. Pero me encanta la comedia Shit's Creek también. Wow, and I got some very delayed sound there. Ok. Y es un poquito sobre mi vida. Bien. ¿Alguien quiere hablar un poquito o presentarse? Somebody want to present themselves? And we don't use introducir because introducir me put something inside. <laughs> so it's presentar. ¿Alguien quiere presentarme? And you might want to raise your hand if you're, you're feeling ready to share, to talk about whatever, lo que sea. Una mano. ¿Quién quiere empezar? Who would like to start? And I think it, for raising your hand, you have to look on the bottom part of your screen for a little button, un botón. It's really hidden on my screen. I have to go through steps. Uh, Karen, ¿quieres empezar? ¿Quieres empezar, Karen? Oh, sure. Sí, ok, vale, magnífico. Hola. Esta es Karen, uh, sí. Me llamo Karen. Uh, vengo originalmente de Michigan, también. Now, I don't know, is this the right, does it show right, or are you seeing it backwards? Anyway, I'm... Sí, sí. Like, sí, podemos ver. We can see. Okay. Podemos ver. Okay. Uh, soy voluntario en el Jardín Botánico del Desierto, pero ahora mismo no puedo trabajar allí. Uh, en lugar de eso, hoy en día mi vida es en Zoom. Busco programas sobre arqueología egipcia antigua, la fauna y flora y la naturaleza. Naturaleza. La naturaleza. Nature. Naturaleza. Ok. Uh, a veces estos son de otras partes del mundo. Y en zonas horarias muy diferentes. Uh, sin embargo, todos me parecen muy interesantes. También cada semana hay varios reunion, reuniones virtuales para grupos de los voluntarios. Uh, este fin de semana va a haber una reunión de la Asociación Mariposa de Arizona Central. Oh, de mariposas. De mariposas. Uh, y por supuesto, hay nuestras clases virtual 
en español. En Zoom me ayuda a sobrevivir la pandemia. Así es. Para mí también. Y, y, y no me gusta particularmente la tecnología, pero me ayuda así. <risa> vale. Bueno, Karen, ¿en qué mes salen las mariposas en el jardín botánico? ¿En qué mes? ¿En qué mes salen? ¿En qué mes del año? ¿En what month? Uh, uh, right, but you're saying, do they leave? Salen. Yeah, they come out. Oh. Ap aparecen. Aparecen. They, they appear. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, es febrero, es marzo. Marzo, April. It depends uh, on the tiempo, uh, pero. Depende de la temperatura, generalmente. Sí. Um, los mariposas. Um, Require, is that word? Requieren, require. Require, to care. Um, approximately uh, la temperatura de um, 50 grados. 50 grados, 50 grados. Or, Co or como mínimo, or... como mínimo. Sí. Okay. Hmm. No sabía, I did not know. Okay. Pero es lógico, ¿no? Es lógico. Bien. Excelente. ¿Alguien más quiere contribuir o compartir, share, compartir un poquito? And if you don't feel like sharing it today, don't, don't worry about it. But I would like for everybody to do a little bit. Un poquito. ¿Quién quiere compartir un poquito? Alguien, alguien, alguien. No sean tímidos. Don't sí. be too shy. This is Keith Hugo. Keith. Raise the hand. I don't know if it worked or not. Oh, I can see it. Keith, puedo ver la mano. Magnífico. I can see your hand. Gracias, Keith. Uh -huh. Continúa, so, um, Keith. Por, por hola, favor. Hola. Uh, mi nombre es uh, Keith. Uh, mi jubilado el uno de enero. El primero de enero. Mi jubilado el uno de enero. ¿De este año? Sí. Ok. Uh, la manera de decir I retired es me jubilé. Me jubilé. Me jubilé. Ok. Sí. El, pero, felicitaciones, Ki. Muchas gracias. So, mis uh, estudiado para gozar y ahora hacer a Adridantes, Adridones y Mantas y Estudio Español. Magnífico. Keith, casi siempre tienes las mejores fotos para las reuniones de Zoom. Siempre tienes fotos en el, en el fondo Fotos muy interesantes, como el helicóptero. Sí. Que me gusta. Felicitaciones, felicitaciones. Muy bien. El Gracias. primero de enero. Ay, qué magnífico. Ok. Bien. ¿Hay alguien más que quiere decir un poquito más? No más. No más. Ok. Ay. Uh. Paquetes. Llegaron paquetes. Mi hija está caminando por la casa con paquetes que, que vienen en la puerta. Ok, ok. ¿Alguien más? ¿Alguien más? Sí. Ah, Juanita, Juanita, magnífico. Tienes un poquito. Oh, sí, Juanita. Hay dos Juanitas, ¿verdad? Sí. Ay, ay la otra. Juan, la, la, eh, bueno, Juanita, Juanita. Ok. I'm, I'm not, not ready, ready here. here. <laughs> sí, I did not need to scare you there, Juanita. Okay, sí, Juanita. Y dos, Jan. 
Y, 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 y eso también, sí. Sí, sí. Yo soy, um, uh, me llamo Jan o Juanita. Um, yo, yo soy enfermera, pero no trabajo ahora um, en la pandemia. Um, yo, yo es viajo <laughs> y no recuerdo ventilators. Oh, oh ventiladores, creo. Sí, ventiladores. Sí. Um, me gusta leer, andar. Y and, uh, andar en el desierto. Um, esto me ayuda a sobrevivir la pandemia. Oh, por supuesto, mi, mi esposo Federico. Federico, aquí 24 horas un día. Al día. Todo, al día. todo el tiempo. Todo, 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 todo. Ah, okay. Pero, um, yo estoy pintado con acuelas, watercolors. Acuarela, acuarela, sí. Aqua, acuarelas. Pintas sí. con acuarelas. Acuarelas. Um, nunca, nunca yo pinté con acuarelas. Un day, un día yo compro las acuarelas y empecé a pintar. Mira, ah. <laughs> la primera pintura. Bueno, Juanita. <laughs> Juanita, bueno. tengo, que, tengo que preguntar. Solamente, 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 solamente. No, no artista. <risa> eres, eres aficionada, fan. Eres aficionada al arte uh, abstracta. Sí, okay. sí. <risa> sí. A mi hija que estudia la pintura en la universidad, a ella le, y está mirando. Me está mirando ahora. Ah, y sí. Uh, sí. A mi hija le gusta pintar uh, cuadros surrealistas. Mm. Surrealistas con animales y cuerpos de personas desnudas. Y <risa> mm. Cosas muy, muy raras. <risa> Cosas muy raras. Ok. <risa> Yo es, estudié um, a science, a science, um, science, a science, I ciencia. A ciencia. 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 Yo estudié ciencia solamente. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Muy bien. Gracias. Excelente. ¿Hay alguien más que quiere hablar un poquito? Juanita. Adredones similar. Sí. Uh, oh, oh. oh. Ke um, ke Kit, no podemos ver muy bien. No, no, no. Is it good? Uh, uh, oh, 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 solo oh, un poco. Oh. Es, es uh, tela? Is that fabric? Es tela? O es, it, es it pintura? Adredones. <laughs> adredones. Oh. Sí. Okay. Oh, oh, un artista. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Con, con, con eh, el fondo aquí, with the background, es un poco, ah, es mejor, es mejor, podemos ver yeah. un poquito mejor. Ok. Oh, bonito. Bien. Sí. <laughs> Muy bien. Ok. ¿Hay alguien que quiere hablar un poquito más? Un poquito más? Nada, uh, nada, nada? Not, nada más. Any, anybody brave enough to introduce themselves a little bit here? So, I, can't, I can't find my hand on oh. the computer screen. <laughs> no importa. I will give it a shot. Dinos algo. <laughs> Tell us something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, me llamo Susan, and I, uh, let's see. Yo veo uh, tres Susanas in the classroom. Sí, eso es. Eso es. That is so, right. Um, me encanta leer. 
Esto me ayuda sobrevivir la pandemia. Pandemia. Pan pandemia. 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 Leo el periódico todas las mañanas. Leo muchos tipos diferentes de libros. La aventura, el horror, la ciencia ficción, uh, la novela policiaca, detective fiction. Sí, sí, uh, uh, sí, policiacas. <laughs> Uh, Cuentos policiacos. I wasn't sure about saying reading uh, allows me to leave the house without COVID. So is that la lectura or is it leyendo? Ah, la lectura, la lectura quiere decir reading. Okay. Como uh, I, my reading is varied. Okay. Mi lectura es variada. Okay, okay. So then I want to say, la lectora me dija salir mi casa sin miedo a COVID. Ah, bien, sí. Okay. Pero lees muchísimas cosas, ¿verdad? Una variedad de noticias. Oh, sí, claro. <laughs> Un estante que está muy lleno, a really, really full bookshop. Sí, eso es. Muy bien. Y Bárbara, tienes... Tienes una mascota. Veo que tienes una mascota, ¿verdad? Bárbara, que tienes una mascota? mascota? Vi, ¿Vi un perro, un perrito? Oh, yes, the dog. Que, uh, um, ¿Dónde? Uh, the, uh, mascotas. ¿Do I have a mascota? Ma mascota es a uh, um, pet. A, a pet. No, uh, pet. No. No, pero um, una, uno loro um, mango. Oh. And he's why I have to keep mute on because ah. he's a parrot and he will. Le gusta squawk. hablar. Sí, sí. Ah, well, he loro. doesn't talk, he just mostly squawks and is unhappy if I'm not paying attention. To A him. los loros les gusta, les gusta hablar muchísimo. Sí, sí eso es. Exactamente. Sí, claro. Ok. Ah, bien. ¿Hay alguien más que quiere hablar un poquito? ¿O no? ¿O no? ¿O no? ¿Nada más? Federico. Federico es de pelo largo. Federico tiene el pelo largo. Sí. No me he cortado el pelo en, en un año. Y un mes. Yo también. Porque sí, bonita, porque bonita no está aquí. Uh, y, and so, I got long hair. <laughs> tired. Así es. Así es. Ok. Uh, bueno. Uh, si... Si nadie tiene más que decir, if nobody has anything more to say, we're going to move on to a... Oh, sí, el perro, el perrito. Sí, ¿cómo se llama el perro? It's easy. Oh, qué precioso. Sí. Qué precioso. Oh. Muy loco. <laughs> <laughs> Pero las mascotas son, son mm -hmm. magníficas para um, distraernos, distract us a little bit. Sí, un poquito. Bien. Ok. Excelente. Um, I, I do want to let everybody know, since we got everybody on right now, a uh, couple of things. This is a little bit of housekeeping in between. Um, you will get an email. Uh, because this is an evening class, it usually goes out in the morning. Um, uh, you'll get a, a recap email that talks about what we did in class. And then I post on that recap email the uh, link to go in and watch class. So if you had people working in your house or you didn't feel well and you couldn't attend class for whatever reason, you can watch what we did during class that week. But I, I, on the email at the end of class, I will always list um, every single link to any homework pages we did, any reading we did, any uh, any videos we used, the whole shebang. So um, 
it, some people do like to take a few notes here and there when we have a, a kind of a class, but, uh, you know, or uh, like a lesson, a formal lesson segment of class. Uh, but don't feel you must, because I usually give you some kind of, of notes to help you through that. Um, and the other second thing I want to let people know is that uh, I am in the homework for this week going to send out a link to a video. It'll be, we're going to pick up with Destinos, everybody who is an old hand on this Zoom. Uh, we're going to be picking up on Destinos, the next chapter. Now, if you have not seen Destinos, and it is very old, so you got to get used to looking at old 80s clothes, shoulder pads. Yeah, um, but it's okay. Um, you know, the point is that it'll get, get you into uh, about a 20 minute session to do for homework to uh, do some listening comprehension. That's the beauty of it. And they always do a segment of that 20, 30 minute show is done in slower Spanish and some in slightly faster Spanish. Um, so if you are a newbie coming in, you will be getting, uh, you should watch for in my email, the link for the new Destinos, but I'm going to give two recap versions, because do you really want to watch all 20 of those first ones that you missed in fall? I, maybe you do. Uh, you know, in which case, eres, eres una maravilla. You're, you're a marvelous person if you do. Yeah, you, you may. But I'm going to list two kind of like um, flashback type uh, um, episodes that will put most of what came beforehand in a nutshell. So you'll know what the basic story is. Okay, so those of you who are newbies will have some more watching to do so that you understand what the, the basic uh, gist of the story is. And then we'll have the new video, which you'll watch for homework. And those are done just to get your ear kind of tuned. You know, that's it. Okay, bien. Um, I'm gonna address one question that came over email first. And then secondly, I'm gonna go off into uh, the difference between two verbs. I thought we would take some time today to talk about two verbs that we use all the time, but there's a little difference between the two verbs. So we're gonna watch part of a video for that. But the first question was, como se dice to choose? Como se dice to choose? Uh, and I wanna, um, I want to show you uh, a a little reference here that will help you. So I'm gonna put this up. This will take us maybe three minutes. Uh, this little reference I really, really love. You know, I've got dictionaries, big and small dictionaries that weigh about ten pounds. I got it all, but. I really, really love this word reference um, site. So I, I, because someone had this question, I wanted to show this. Uh, and it's, it's really great for the, the new folks. Some of you may have used it, but let's put in, put a ejemplo, for example, choose. The reason that this is so good, even better than my humongous dictionary, mi, <laughs> mi diccionario enorme, is that it gives you context context for a word. When you're searching for a word, you say, oh, our theme for next week is this, and, and you know you have to look up certain words. But, you know, you have the word bark, and bark could mean the sound that a dog makes, or it could be the stuff on the outside of a tree, and, you know, wait, whoa, wait a minute, when I look it up, which word do I use? It gives you some context, this particular um, website. So they'll give you, ah, choose, elegir, Elegir, uh, which also means elect. If you elect something, you choose something. But they always give you some sentences so you can see how it's used so that if that particular word isn't really the same idea that you have in mind, you may want to look down the list on the dictionary. Yeah, thanks. So, creo que elegirá el jersey azul. Uh, I think I will choose the blue sweater. And then they give you make a selection. Also, elegir. Uh, you can't take both. You must choose. No puedes llevarte las dos. 
tienes que elegir. You gotta choose. And they've got a choose to do, escoger. Oh, a different verb that also means choose, but a slightly different context. He chose to become an architect. Escogió ser arquitecto. Uh, and to choose between. So meaning you got an alternative, an either or situation. They also put in escoger entre. Entre quiere decir between, or in some cases in between, but in this case between. Escoger entre. He needs to choose from the first three options. Debe escoger. He needs to, he ought to, it's obligation. Debe escoger entre las tres opciones. Okay. Uh, escoger entre. Choose between. And now you have an array of things you're choosing from. So generally, to choose, se dice en español, o elegir, o escoger. Y depende de la situación. Depende, ¿no? Uh, bien. Okay, so that's a good resource. When we give you a theme of, of something to talk about for the next week, and you need to look up some special words, that's a good source to go to. Uh, para que sepan, just so you know. Uh, bien. Y um, durante esta... Oh, um, esta temporada, during the season, durante esta temporada, durante el invierno, durante las clases de invierno, uh, vamos a practicar especialmente un poquito esta idea de verbos reflexivos. Es, es un tema, it's one topic, es un tema que vamos a explorar y practicar un poquito más. Verbos reflexivos como me llamo, me llamo para presentarle a alguien, ¿no? Uh, entonces, la semana que viene, the week that is coming, uh, we will use a little bit more of these reflexive verbs and review what do they mean and how might we use them. And, and we're going to open next week uh, talking about routines what we generally do, because one of the very, very common and one of the easiest ways to use reflexive verbs is to talk about what we generally do at a typical time. Uh, you know, getting ready for our day, throughout our day. Uh, so we'll come back to that. But that's gonna require that we use a little bit of, uh, you know, get used to using pronouns with the verbs like me llamo, not just llamo. Por ejemplo, llamo, llamo a mi amigo por teléfono es me llamo, I call myself. O me dedico, me dedico a enseñar, I dedicate myself to teaching, talking about what we do for a living. Okay, uh, so that is what uh, reflexives are going to entail. We're going to use, however, a kind of special reflexive. Uh, I think I'm going to do a share screen with you on this. Boy, I hope I get my whiteboard to give me a to give me a text back. Oh, it did yesterday. It wouldn't do that. I'm going to blame that on Cox yesterday <laughs> because I just like to blame somebody, not me. Um, okay, but okay. Uh, here's one reflexive I want you to use, and it's a reflexive that we don't normally use oops, to, to talk about routines, but it kind of is. Uh, Todos pueden ver. Can everybody see? See? Mm -hmm. La sí. pantalla. Okay. Uh, entonces, this is going to be a reflexive you don't expect, but it's going to tie in with another video uh, that we're doing in just a bit. And this is going to be not uh, llamarse. Remember, these reflexives, when you see them as an infinitive, they've always got a say hanging off the, the butt end there. <laughs> yeah. But when we actually use this verb, we have to 
flip that little say, and the say morphs into may or te or say uh, or nos, or well, only if you're in Spain, us, or say again. Okay, so se is the same for el e a usted, se is the same for e o sea sus ustedes, but I have to use one of these uh, plus the verb. So, uh, entonces es me llamo, uh, es te llamas, and, and that little pronoun is always, uh, es muy simpático, it, it plays nice with the verb, meaning it will always match up and be in a corresponding verb that's in the same form. So if you've got nos, uh, you're gonna have a nosotros verb, yeah? Um, oh, do I have my accent? I do have my accent marks on. Great. I'm magnifico. See. Sí. Uh, okay. So, me llamo, te llamas, se llama, nos llamamos, o sea, llamáis. So don't worry about using vosotros. Uh, se llaman. Es un verbo reflexivo. Es generalmente el primer verbo reflexivo que, que aprenden los estudiantes de español, ¿no? Pero hay una cantidad enorme de verbos reflexivos. And sometimes they even have a meaning that isn't really what you normally think of as reflexive. So I'm going to give you one that I want you to try to use next week um, and, and to incorporate somewhere in, uh, in whatever you'll do use to talk with maybe a couple of reflexive verbs. One of the reflexive verbs I want you to use is going to be this. Verse. And you may say, verse, que es eso? What the heck is that? Verse. How can verse even be reflexive? Ver es to see, no? Verse es look at yourself. Que es verse? And um, verse does, well, no, it doesn't really mean to look at yourself. This won't be the usual reflect, uh, reflexive that you're accustomed to. But it will be, uh, me veo. O, por ejemplo, te ves. O, por ejemplo, se ve. O, por ejemplo, nos vemos. O, por ejemplo, uh, pues, no usen, por favor, vosotros. Don't use vosotros, but I'm just used to putting it in. O, se ven. Y se ven. Y no quiere decir to look at yourself. Quiere decir, look a certain way. Mm. ¿Cómo se usa? How do you use this? Okay, un ejemplo. I'm going to give you an example. Es muy coloquial. This is a very colloquial thing. So it won't fall into the same category as all the other reflexive verbs. Uh, por ejemplo, si estás hablando con una amiga, con buena amiga, Y la pobre amiga eh, está, oh, está muy fatiga, está exhausta. Eh, tu amiga está exhausta. Uh, puedes, puedes decir, ay, Anita, te ves muy, te ves muy cansada. Te ves muy cansada. You look really tired. Oh. Por ejemplo, uh, oh, when I ran out of hair dye, oh my God, ay Dios mío. When I ran out of hair dye, uh, you know, I would complain to my girlfriend, si, ¿sí? uh, me quejo con mis amigas. Uh, me, me veo, me veo, me, me veo muy vieja. I look really old. <laughs> okay, so when you want to express how you look physically, we use this in a reflexive way, which is kind of fun. You know, this is what we use sometimes. Uh, uh, oh, this is the, the infamous thing, the infamous thing of asking your husband, uh, asking your husband, me veo muy gorda en este vestido. <laughs> Ah, bien, sí, me veo muy, ah, me veo muy gorda en este vestido. Do I look, do I look fat in this dress? Yeah, 
this is what you would use to ask that question. So uh, one of the reflexives that I will want you to try to use is verse, to talk about yourself or to talk about somebody in your house. Hmm. Or maybe you just wanna, you know, diss on somebody you find annoying, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay, and, and maybe throw a porque in there. Uh, por ejemplo, me, me, veo, me veo horrible porque, porque tengo el pelo muy largo. Me veo terrible. I look awful. Porque tengo el pelo muy largo. Mi esposo se ve muy gordo. Porque, porque está comiendo, está comiendo galletas todo el tiempo. Está comiendo galletas por la mañana, galletas por la tarde, galletas por la noche. Se ve muy gordo. He looks kind of fat. Bien, ok. Bien. So I want you to work uh, a verse in there a little bit, un poquito. Uh, just for fun, to talk about somebody in your house or talk about yourself. Bien. But we are going to look at the difference between... Um, uh, do we need more review of what reflexive verbs do? Sí o no? Un poquito más? Un poquito más. Okay, un poquito más. Let me bring back my uh, my whiteboard. Wow, I wonder if it saved that stuff. Ah, 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 I see. Eso es. Okay, so let's look at, verse is going to be the, um, kind of the unusual one, okay? But most of these verbs are going to be um, unos ejemplos. Let's look at some examples of things you might use to talk about your routine and your day. Besides llamarse, you might want to use uh, dormirse, to fall asleep. Not really to sleep, to fall asleep. Reflexives always tweak the meaning of that verb. If the verb were dormir were to stand alone, it would mean just to sleep. Pero dormirse es fall asleep. Um, uh, despertarse. Despertarse is to wake up, but that you yourself, not that somebody else wakes you up, that, you know, you wake up. Por ejemplo, me despierto generalmente, me despierto uh, casi todas las mañanas, me despierto a las seis. En el verano, me despierto a las cuatro y media o a las cinco, porque... Los gatos me despiertan. The cats wake me up. Las mascotas me despiertan. They wake me up. That's not reflexive. Pero me despierto. Me despierto porque los gatos... Me despierto a las cinco, a las cinco y media en el verano porque los gatos quieren comer por la mañana. Y me despierto muy temprano en el verano. Pero no me despierto muy temprano durante el invierno porque los gatos se están durmiendo, durmiendo más, durmiendo más, duermen más, they sleep more. Ok, despertarse, to wake up, levantarse, to get up. Es un poquito diferente, it's a little bit different, it's not the action of waking, but physically getting up. And that could be either getting up out of bed or getting up from a chair. Okay? Bien. Uh, como por ejemplo, uh, por ejemplo, ducharse. Ducharse, to take a shower. Bien. Uh, como lavarse, to wash a part of your body, like hands. Yeah, face. Okay, not to wash your car. Wash your car is just lavar. But lavarse, to wash a body part. That's just what they use. See, ¿Sí? bien. Uh, um, cepillarse los dientes. 
brush your teeth. Ooh, br brush, uh, brush teeth, yeah. Uh, some people, sometimes in Mexico, in Mexico se dice a veces lavarse los dientes. Uh, depending on which region you're in, they'll use this for brushing the teeth. Uh, yeah, they use washing your teeth. Some people prefer to use that instead of cepillarse los dientes. The two are equivalent terms. People would understand you perfectly no matter which verb you used to talk about that. Uh, uh, secarse, to dry off, like after your shower, uh, to dry off you know, any part of your body. Uh, that would be reflexive. So, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole batch of these reflexive verbs that talk about various things uh, one does throughout one's day. And I will send you an extra, uh, an extra clip, an extra snippet um, that will give you a whole list of different verbs. But I do want people to maybe uh, practice using some of those uh, to talk about generally your daily routine. Uh, oh, algo muy fácil, uh, también, uh, prepararse, Prepa uh, prepararse, prepararse to get ready. Uh, also, people may use uh, arreglarse instead of prepararse to get ready. Okay, so, you know, there are whole bucks of verbs. Uh, to get dressed is vestirse, to get dressed, literally to dress oneself, okay? So all of these th uh, kinds of verbs, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you uh, either a website link or a formal list, all these verbs are used in a combo. There have to be two words that you coordinate and use together to get that meaning across. Because if I just say lavo las manos, it doesn't mean I'm washing my hands. Maybe I've got a two-year-old and I'm showing them how to wash their hands properly. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, lavar can be used for la ropa. Lavar can be used for los platos. Lavar can be used for el carro. Okay. You can use lavar for talking about washing anything in your house, but to wash a part of your body, it's always lavarse. So it's always me lavo. If I do it to myself, me was a yo verb, me lavo. Te with a tu verb, te lavas. Se with an L E A usted verb, se lava. No, uh, nos with a nosotros verb, nos uh, lavamos. Uh, uh, se with an ellos verb, se lavan. So you'll notice if you talk about one person, not talking to them, but about them, it'll be se with a singular verb or se with a plural verb, se lava or se lavan, okay? Uh, but these are verbs that we, we typically use to talk about reflexivos, things that you do routinely throughout the day. Si, ¿Sí? bien claro? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? Anybody have a question about that? Si ¿Sí o no? Bien. And I will send you a link that'll give you a whole Batch. There are tons and tons of these. Some of these talk strictly about routines. Some of them don't really talk about routines, like the verb for complain is reflexive. Even though, does that make sense? I complain to myself. No, not really, but some verbs just are. Ver, if we use it as verse, you know, to look a certain way. Yeah, you don't really think of that as reflexive, but colloquially, we often use it to talk about how somebody looks, how they appear, what their appearance is like. So that one kind of breaks the mold of the usual reflexes. And I wanted you to try to worm it in. Karen, tienes alguna pregunta? Yes, um, well, why wouldn't you use mirar? If Oh, Que lista eres, how smart you are. We're gonna take a look at that right now. <laughs> we're gonna take a look at that right now. Um, another thing we're going to take a look at this season are certain verbs that uh, 
it's like, which one do I use? You know what I mean? Those verbs where you're always like, I'm confused. Which one of these do I use? And one of the points of confusion can be ver versus mirar. Um, at times, there's a little bit of regional variation with these. But there are certain things where you can peg. Do I use mirar or do I use ver? So we've got a very fun video to look at about that topic. And um, I do want you to, he's not gonna use ver se, he just uses ver versus mirar. And cuál es la diferencia? He's going to show you strictly with examples. And he's going to give a definition. Um, we may not watch the whole thing. It's a little bit, es un poquito largo. Es un video un poquito largo. It's a little bit long. I will send you the link to watch the whole thing, however. So uh, we're going to take a look at ver and mirar because many, many people wind up having questions about that. I need to switch my screens. Paciencia, por favor. A little bit of patience here while I get this up. Now, when I send you the link for this guy, um, I will tell you, for your purposes, you will want to slow him down. I'll show you what I mean. Most of you will probably feel more comfortable. And I'm trying to get my Zoom screen. Here we go get my button on. Um, most of you will want to go down here to this little settings box when you listen to this later, because this is a good idea to listen to this later. And you will want to slow him down to what I show you here, 0.75, okay? For me, he does not speak particularly fast, but most of you will probably more com be more comfortable listening to him slowing this down. And he, él va a explicar. He's going to explain. Now, he's very Spanish, so he does have a Spanish accent versus a Mexican accent. But he is going to explain in very general terms with examples, some of them kind of funny, cuál es la diferencia entre, cuál es la diferencia, what is the difference, cuál es la diferencia entre ver y mirar. Okay, bien. Y vamos a escuchar un poquito. ¿Qué tal? Esto que estáis viendo aquí es una pared real. Mucha gente, mucha gente seguro que está pensando, pero eso, eso es una imagen, eso es una fotografía. No, tío, no, esto es real, esto es real como la vida misma. Esto es... Yeah, th this is like real life, he's saying. Now, you're going to hear him throwing in this word tío. And tío is just a slang in Spain. Usually not used in Mexico. This is used in Spain. Tío is like, hey man, hey guy. For a girl, tía. It just means hey man. So don't let that throw you. He's not talking about his uncle. Son piedras, tío. Estos son piedras de verdad. Estoy en una casa de verdad. Mira, mira, mira. Esto es una casa de verdad con un jardín. Y así es como se aprenden los idiomas. En un escenario natural. En un escenario real. Con español de verdad. <ríe> bueno, eh... <ríe> me estoy enrollando, ¿eh? Me estoy enrollando. Basta de introducciones, basta de introducciones. En este vídeo... Yo voy a hablar de la diferencia entre ver y mirar. ¡Uh! ¡Cuánta luz! Aquí hay mucha luz. ¡Uy, uy, uy! uy. No estoy acostumbrado, no estoy acostumbrado. Es que me acabo de levantar, me acabo de levantar y todavía tengo, todavía no, no me, me he acostumbrado a tanta luz. ¡Uh! Me acabo de levantar. I just got up. Me and he really means... Me levanto, me levanto, but, but he makes it like recent past by saying, me acabo de levantar. I just got up. Además, es que yo como, como ahora vivo en Londres, pues claro, 
mí tanta luz me deslumbra, me deslumbra. Fijaos ahí cuánta luz hay, por el amor de Dios, pero es como se puede, cómo se puede soportar eso. ¡Oh! <risa> <risa> Tengo que hacer el vídeo con los ojos, con los ojos cubiertos, con, con, con gafas de sol, ¿no? Porque si no, si no, no veo nada, no veo nada, no veo. No... I have to wear glasses because I can't see anything. Ah. No veo, de eso hablamos en este vídeo De eso hablamos en este vídeo De la diferencia entre ver y mirar ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Hay mucha gente que está desesperada Mucha gente que me escribe emails, mensajes Mucha gente que me, que, me, que, me, que me para por la calle y me dice Juan, Juan, ¿cuál es la diferencia entre ver y mirar? ¿Pero por qué? ¿Por qué hay dos verbos para lo mismo? Porque no es lo mismo, tío, no es lo mismo No es lo mismo ver que mirar si tenemos dos verbos es porque son dos cosas diferentes, tío. ¿Estáis listos? ¿Estáis listas? Pues suscríbete, eh, tío, suscríbete, eh, pero bueno, tú suscríbete. Es que estáis viendo, estáis viendo este vídeo, estáis viendo este canal que es fantástico. And notice you're watching this channel. And he does not use me at all. Mm. Ah, fíjense, notice that, fíjense. Que es un canal fantástico para aprender español y estáis ahí y no os suscribís, tío. Suscríbete, pero ¿qué te cuesta? ¿Qué te cuesta? Si es gratis, tío, si es gratis, te suscribes, le das a la campanita y así no te pierdes ningún vídeo. Pero hombre, por Dios, ¿estás listo? ¿Estás lista? Pues empezamos. A ver es, let's see, when you're thinking to yourself, you often say, a ver, hmm, let me see. Voy a, voy a buscar, voy a buscar un fontanero, voy a buscar un, un fontanero, fontanero es, a, a... un fontanero es plumber, un mm. fontanero es plumber. Arreglar el grifo. Come fix the faucet. No me, no me sale agua caliente. Lo que pasa Hot es que estoy, estoy mirando, estoy mirando aquí, estoy mirando las páginas amarillas. I'm looking at the yellow pages. Yellow pages. Estoy mirando, miro las páginas amarillas. Estoy mirando, estoy mirando because he's talking about in real time I am doing this. But you could say miro las páginas amarillas también. Ok. ¿No? Estoy mirando las páginas amarillas, pero no veo, no veo los fontaneros, tío. I'm looking at the yellow pages, but I don't... Any plumber. I don't see... Any plumber. A plumber's man, tío. <laughs> no veo, no veo ningún fontanero. I don't see any plumber. No veo ningún, no veo ningún fontanero. I don't see any plumber. Estoy mirando, estoy mirando, pero no, no veo ningún fontanero, no veo ningún fontanero. A ver. Voy a mirar, a mirar, voy a mirar los fontaneros. ¿Dónde están? ¡Ah! Aquí están. <ríe> Ahora los veo. Ahora... Now I see them. Ahora los veo. Now I see them. Ahora los veo muy bien, los fontaneros. Sí, señor. Voy a, voy a llamar a un fontanero, tío, porque... Eh, porque yo no me puedo duchar con agua fría, no, no, no. 
<risa> ¿Os habéis dado cuenta? Mirar, mirar significa, significa, bueno, dirigir, dirigir los ojos, la vista a, hacia algo, ¿no? De una forma intencionada, ¿no? Yo quiero... Yo... Ah, oh, a ver, bueno, sí. Tiene una definición. Aquí Juan tiene en azul, ¿sí? La cuadrita azul tiene la definición de mirar. Es dirigir, direct, or, or turn, <laughs> or fix on, dirigir la vista, to, to cast your sight somewhere, <laughs> hacia algo. Okay? To direct your line of vision somewhere, specifically. Con intención. You are intentionally moving your eyes and focusing on something if you use mirar. Yo quiero dirigir eh, mis ojos hacia, hacia un objeto. Dirigir mis ojos, direct my eyes. Persona. Eso es mirar. Dirigir de forma intencional, con intención, dirigir mis ojos, la vista, hacia algo, ¿de acuerdo? O hacia alguien, ¿vale? Eso es, eso es mirar. Yo estoy mirando hacia allí, estoy mirando en aquella dirección. Ok, bueno, clase, entonces, mirar es como enfocar. Enfocar, focusing on something. Es mirar. Vale, estoy mirando. Por ejemplo, mira, 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 mira qué jardín. Mira qué jardín tan bonito tengo. And now he's using mirar, which is a vosotros command, so don't worry about that too much. It, it would just be, you know, miren, if we used it here in Latin like that. Miren. Miren, hey, look, ah, look. When you tell somebody, hey, look, right? You are telling them to don't just sort of like aimlessly look around. Hey, look, I'm telling you to direct and focus your attention on something when I tell you look, okay? A lot of people may use this verb mirar, mirar uh, to, to give you a command on the street. You ask for directions, you're lost. They'll, they'll uh, uh, mire, mire, look, mire, look, and they'll point, right? So when anybody wants you to specifically focus in a particular direction on a particular thing, a particular person, you will use mirar, and mirar is Mira the appropriate Mira jardín, eh? Dirige tus ojos eh? en aquella dirección. Mira, mira que jardín. Mira qué plantas tan bonitas tengo aquí detrás. Mira, 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 ¿vale? Mira, me pongo a mirar, me pongo a... a, a dirijo mis ojos en aquella dirección. Uh, eso es mirar. Ver significa percibir. Si tienes los ojos abiertos, ves. Ah, ver quiere decir percibir. Ver, to see, is really for perception. You know, your, your whole field of vision. Not looking at something specific, but you just see things. Yeah? Percibir, perceiving it. Okay. Otro ejemplo. Voy a abrir esta ventana, pero tengo miedo. Tengo miedo, he says, I'm scared. Porque mi vecino, el vecino que vive enfrente, enfrente de mi casa. Neighbor that lives, uh, like, right facing his house, yeah. Pues el tío, el tío está siempre desnudo. That guy's always naked. Ahora en verano, tiene las, eh, las ventanas de su casa abiertas de par en par, de par en... Uh, he's always got his, he's got, a, 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 es una frase, de, pa, de par en par, he's got them wide open. 
His windows are wide open. Par significa abiertas completamente. Tiene las ventanas de su casa de par en par abiertas y el tío está desnudo en casa. Y entonces yo, cuando abro la ventana, cuando abro la ventana, no quiero, no quiero mirar. I don't want to look. <laughs> I don't want to look. No quiero mirar a su casa. I don't want to look no at his house. Quiero mirar en la dirección de su casa. I don't want to look in the direction of his house. Porque no quiero, no quiero verlo, no quiero verlo desnudo. No quiero verlo desnudo. I don't want to see him naked. Ugh. No quiero verlo. Ah, la diferencia. No quiero mirar a en la dirección de su casa porque no quiero no quiero verlo desnudo I don't want to see this naked guy and that just no perceiving him desnudo, right? y, y por eso no, no miro I don't look no quiero mirar el tío está allí desnudo pero yo no, <ríe> no quiero mirar no quiero mirar no quiero mirar en la dirección de su casa porque muchas veces muchas veces lo veo desnudo y a mí no a mí no me gusta oye tío yo porque porque tengo que ver yo a la gente desnuda a mí eso no a mí eso no me gusta I don't like it okay bien okay uh, and I will let you watch the rest of his little he always has silly videos but they kind of stick in your brain uh, but at the end I want you to watch he's going to talk about TV Uh, almost every textbook you have, including this one, mm -hmm. they use mirar with televisión, tele. Yo nunca digo miro la televisión. Me cuesta un poco decir miro la televisión. It costs me a little bit. It's hard for me. Me cuesta. It's hard for me. Me cuesta decir miro la televisión. Porque mir, para mí, para mí, miro la televisión es, oh, wow, look at that TV. There it is. Hmm. But when I watch TV, I sit down and really enjoy a program. Uso ver. Now, in some regions, that flips. So people know what you mean. But for me, mirar la televisión means to look at it like maybe I'm looking in a showroom. You know, maybe I'm down at Target. I'm deciding which one of those six big screens I want to buy. But when I watch a program, it's always veo, veo muchos programas. Veo el programa Schitt's Creek porque me encanta el programa Schitt's Creek. Me encanta ver, me encanta ver ese programa. So, oddly enough, with watching a show on TV or watching a play, para mí, con frecuencia digo ver. I'm accustomed to using ver. Some people may use me that, but uh, you'll have to get to the end of the video to watch him using that. But you'll understand what he means when he gets to that section. Es un poquito mejor la diferencia entre ver y mirar, ver y mirar, un poquito mejor. Yes. If, if you, okay, if you are, um, mirar es muy útil. Mirar is a very useful verb. When you want to tell somebody, look, literally look, or maybe sarcastically, hey, look, you're really bothering me. Eh, oye, mira. <laughs> yeah, okay. So whether you mean it literally, like really look, or hey, look, man, you're stepping on my foot. <laughs> that kind of look. Mira, mira, you know, a command, mira. A polite command, mire, mire. A uh, command to a bunch of people, like a guy is taking you in a tour group, And he says, hey, look at that beautiful church. I'm taking you on a tour of the old colonial part of the city. Miren, miren esas iglesias elegantes. Estas iglesias 
ancianas, these ancient churches. Miren, miren, look, look. This verb for you as a tourist is most frequently what you hear when somebody tells you, hey, fix your eyeballs on that. Or you're lost. And they'll say, ah, el banco. Usted necesita ir al banco. Bien, para cambiar dinero. Uh, bueno, mire, 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 el banco, mire, el banco está allí. Ah, look, the bank's over there. So mirar is often used with commands. That's how you will hear most people using it. Um, but when you want to see or talk about what you see, um, whether it's a person or a thing or a landscape, um, you're generally going to be using that verb ver. Okay. So I'm going to give you a second topic. First topic is going to be use some reflexives next week. Um, the other thing I would like you to do is to uh, talk about what you can see from your house or a particular window looking out of your house or what you can see out of your front yard. Or maybe you want to talk about what you see uh, in your favorite place. Un ejemplo. Voy a darles, yo voy a darles, I'm going to give you guys, Voy a darles un ejemplo de hablar de algo que no es la casa. I'm going to give you an example of something that's not your house. Si, si quiero al, hablar de, de lo que veo, of what I see. Si quiero hablar de lo que veo, of what I see. Cuando monto, uh, monto en bicicleta. Cuando monto en bicicleta, puedo hablar un poquito y puedo decirles, I can tell you guys, uh, puedo decirles, cuando monto en bicicleta en el parque, típicamente veo árboles, veo cactos, veo cactos, veo las montañas, del Parque McDowell, veo las montañas en la distancia del Parque McDowell, uh, veo muchas rocas, veo, veo conejitos y bunnies, veo conejitos en los senderos, veo de vez en cuando, once in a while, de vez en cuando veo un serpiente, veo un serpiente, ok? Es lo que veo cuando monto en bicicleta. It's what I see when I go mountain biking. But if I want to talk about seeing a person, there's one little extra thing I'm going to need to do. Maybe besides talking about conejitos, the bunnies, or serpientes, the snakies, uh, or las montañas, right? What I see when I'm on my bike. Maybe I want to say, that I see other people. And if I talk about seeing other people, I would have to say something like this. También, uh, también además de, besides, además de las montañas, además de uh, los cactos, además de las serpientes en el sendero, veo a muchos ciclistas, veo a muchas personas, veo a muchas personas que también montan en bicicleta. Veo a personas que caminan, veo a personas, veo a mucha gente que camina en los senderos del parque. So if I want to talk about seeing people, I need to say veo a. 
because what's receiving the action of being seen is a human being. But when I talk about the rocks and the snakes and the bunnies and the mountains, which are just things, <clears throat> I won't use that little word, ah. Entienden? Entienden? Well, no, so, muchos, muchos personas uh, ruina. Muchas personas? Ruina. Ruina? Ruin? <laughs> the wreck. <laughs> On the <laughs> snaky <laughs> trail. <laughs> the crash. Ah, okay. Bien. So, uh, talk about what you see when you're out. Talk about what you can see from your front window or your back window or your bedroom window or your balcony or your patio. And maybe it's your neighbors. Maybe it's the stuff you've got in your backyard. Maybe it's the little critters that come. Uh, maybe it's your neighbor who lives across the street. No sé. So there are a couple things I want you to try to talk about. Uh, when you do the, the bit about talking about what you see, I'm gonna send you off into smaller groups to practice that a little bit so that you've got maybe three people to chat with and a smaller group that you can uh, bounce some ideas off each other. Uh, so that, that particular conversation will be in smaller groups. I will send you to what we call breakout rooms uh, where I'll segment you off with maybe three other people to give your examples of what you see from your house or from your favorite park or from your patio or lo que sea, whatever it may be. Okay, entienden? The big reflexive thing we'll do together. Uh, the shorter discussion on using ver will we'll do uh, in smaller groups, okay? Está bien. Una pregunta. Yeah. Sí, sí, dime. Yeah. Um, what about if you're talking about seeing your pet, seeing a pet? Sometimes, your pets? Yes. Would yeah, you use, you use the Because it's a pet, ah. an animal. Qué buena pregunta. Qué buena pregunta. Ah, sí, pet. Ah, hmm. Generalmente con las mascotas, ah. Usually with our pets that we love, we use that ah. It is called the ah personal. And that just means that whatever I see is uh, a human being, right? When, when a person receives the action, we use the ah personal. Veo a mi esposo, veo a mi esposo, veo a mi vecino y su hijo. I see my uh, neighbor and his kid. Uh, we need the ah. We often use that ah personal with pets as well. Por ejemplo, cuando me levanto, when I get up. Cuando me levanto a las seis de la mañana, la primera cosa que veo es, veo a mi, veo a mi gata, que se llama Calisto. I see my, my cat whose name is Calisto. Veo a mi gata. Because she's my pet, I will use that a personal, even though she is not a person. Because with an animal that's near and dear to us, we do use that a personal. If I'm talking about a bunny on the trail, I do not use the a personal. He's not my pet. El, la serpiente, claro que no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Una vaca, un, un caballo, no. It, ah, if I were horseback riding, I would use the up personal if I talk about, you know, uh, seeing my horse, probably. Yes, because he would be, you know, near and dear to me as opposed to the snake. Bien? Está bien? Okay, yeah. so small group will be for uh, what you see uh, and big group will be reflexive. Bien claro? Pretty clear? See? Sí. 
Okay. Uh, and we'll get delve more into uh, reflexes. One little thing I want to leave you with, with reflexes. Reflexives can be used in any tense at all. Many of you may be, com uh, uh, may be comfortable only with using present tense, and that's okay. If you want to be real fancy, you can try to use a little bit with past, right? Um, but you don't have to. You can keep it present tense. Entonces, un ejemplo, por ejemplo, puedo decir típicamente que en, en un día normal, durante un día normal, me despierto, me despierto, I wake up, me despierto, pues depende, pero normalmente, típicamente, me despierto a las seis y media. Me despierto y me levanto para dar comida, para dar de comer a las mascotas. Porque tengo cinco mascotas en mi casa. Tengo cinco mascotas. Tengo cinco gatos. Y entonces me levanto para dar de comer a las mascotas. Y después de tomar un café, me ducho, me seco el pelo, porque ahora tengo que secarme el pelo. Me seco el pelo. Me he visto. Me he visto ahora de un suéter y me arreglo para, para dar mis clases de, de Zoom. I get ready to give my Zoom classes. And it can be that short. It can be that short. You might want to talk about your routine at night. Al fin del día, me lavo la cara. Me lavo la cara para, para quitarme el, el maquillaje, take off makeup. Sí, me lavo la cara, uh, me cepillo los dientes, uh, me pongo, me pongo un, un pijama y me duermo, me duermo. A las once, me acuesto, me acuesto, I go to bed, me acuesto a las once, ¿verdad? Ok, bien. Eso es. I'm confused. Ok. Um, I will give you a website to look at a whole bunch of typical reflexives that we may use to share some ideas about talking about routines when we come in next week. ¿Está bien? Sí. Fantástico. Ok. ¿Hay una pregunta? Yeah. Um, I, I uh, you know, um, it, it seems like it's too advanced for me um, because the last time I did, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, and I used this book. And I don't know if I skip <gasps> another. Oh, oh ok. That so, book... did I, did I uh, skip another like a uh, step um, because I think this one is too advanced. For a little me. It too seems advanced. Like, it seems like everybody understand that, but I don't think that I can understand that much. Okay. So um, I'm confused. Like you know, which uh, unit that you're using? Because I try to look at it and and study it, like looking at it and try of the pages over here, but. Um, that that book is one that I use in a lower level class, and it's a class this one? for. Uh, no, no, this no, that is correct. Okay, so uh, oh, this is sorry. the one, the new one. <laughs> See but the the one, the old one. Not the I, black I, one. That's the old. Yeah, one. Th that's the old one that I joined your class with this. Yes. And it is is this correct that I made like enrollment this into is, this, this class? This is the one. After? This is the one we have used. So, so after this is this? See, si, yes. But we just take different topics every week out of this. So um, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna make sure you've got 
uh, Juanita, is a little video that's going to show you how these verbs work. Okay. So that you feel a little more comfortable. And yeah. don't feel like you have to talk a I lot. feel like I'm lost here. <laughs> okay. Um, um, and, and you know what? This is going to be way at the end. It's going to be page 193. I'm going to... I'm going to tell you where in this book you can find this topic. And I want you to say only present tense. Oh. A lot of people in this class are not real comfortable, super comfortable with past tense. Keep it very okay. much presente, presente, presente. So you're not starting from the beginning, like the, the unit? No, the we, just one? Take, we just take various topics and do oh. some speaking practice with this class. Yes. That is okay. what we do. And the beginning class, I start from nothing that people know absolutely nothing. Um, and I would tell but do you, you think that uh, do you think that I still okay, like, you know, joining this class, because I don't want it to be like, you know, everybody's already advanced, and I'm not. So you know, I don't want everybody. It, like... Everybody's not advanced. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Seriously, so, they can, they can, no, they can spend this already. Anyway. Don't yeah, come on, way. Barb. You're I'm, not alone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I will here. send you. Um, so you back. can look at page 193 <laughs> in this book. It's going to tell you this, but I'm going to show you. I will send you a link to a video that is way even easier than what you see in this book. Okay. And it'll tell you how these verbs work. But the way we introduce this is that almost everybody knows how to say, me llamo, my name is. Mm. Yeah. And that's yeah. the same kind of verb as, yeah. as what we're going to use. But I want you to pick verbs that are easy for you to use after you watch the video I'll send you. Okay. And after you read that part of the book. And you're probably not going to read every single page of that chapter. You're <laughs> just going to take some easy stuff. And I'll tell you, it'll be like what's on page 195. Um, like maybe some, but not all of the verbs. Uh, you know, even 194. I wouldn't look at 194. I'd look at 195. Because it talks about things about how to talk about like, you know, getting up in the morning, going to bed, uh, 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 mm -hmm. taking a shower, uh, getting okay. dressed, all those kind of verbs. And the video I'm going to refer you to will, uh, oh, and also 197. So I'm going to tell you exactly the pages, exactly the pages that will have the kind of verbs you will want to use, and okay. uh, a little video that'll show you how we use those. But we always pair it up with one of those pronouns. A um, me to say I'm doing it. A te to ask somebody, are you doing it? A se to talk about somebody else, and a nos to talk about we do this. Okay. 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 And, we, and we'll do a quick <laughs> lesson before we'll do a quick lesson before you ever we, before I throw you into the pool <laughs> and tell you to swim, scared. baby. <laughs> okay. It's so yeah, I was like, all right. Okay. okay. So we're gonna we'll we will do do not do not feel bad. We will we will do a, a real typical overview lesson before I throw you in the pool and <laughs> ask you to try a few sentences on your own. Oh in. dear, okay. Because <laughs> I never throw you in the pool until you sink or swim. <laughs> That's not my style. Oh my god! But we'll pick some easy things and you can pick easier things or harder things or anything in between and that is A-OK. -okay. All but, right. but keep it present if you're one of those people, because I have a few people in this who kind of like to tweak a little bit with some past, you can do that, but you don't have to. You do not okay. have to. Okay. Está bien? All right. We good? Yeah, good. Fantastico. Right. Okay. Son <laughs> las siete y media. It's 7.30-ish. See, yes. uh, and so we will uh, we'll leave this for today, but you've got two things. And you know, the, the part about talking, using ver will be very easy because it'll be just that one verb, ver. Veo, ves, you know, uh, ve, vemos, all of those. Okay, okay. Bien? Fantastico. Bien. Okay, right. and you'll get a whole set of instructions with the email that comes after the class. <laughs> okay. Fantastico. Ah, wait, un placer. It was a pleasure. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll get your 
email with all of the links for everything. Y nos vemos, nos vemos, en, uh, en, nos vemos el miércoles, ¿no? Nos vemos. We'll see each other. That's a reflexive verb. <gasps> with ver. Nos vemos. We'll see each other. Nos vemos. Nos, Nos vemos, vemos el miércoles. Oh, y con el perrito también. Ah, qué, okay. qué precioso. Ok. <laughs> vale. Uh, Buena clase. Entonces, ok. Miércoles. Nos vemos. Que tengan Nos vemos. buena semana. Have a good week. All right. Hasta luego. Hasta, Hasta, Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye, Bart. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry, school. Juanita. Oh, yeah. No te preocupes. Do not worry. Do not worry. It is, it is muy fácil. Será muy fácil. No te preocupes. Do not worry yourself. No te preocupes. Bien. Okay. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Y hasta luego.